think 2013 there's plenty of think this time uh, to think this time largely because of the state of uh, the economy the debate around demography and more importantly the whole you know billion people demographic dividend is that something that leaves uh, more questions and answers even to you as you come here to talk about that subject you know i see demographics as uh, you can see it as a glass glass half full or half empty you can see the optimistic side of it or you could see the dangers of our demographic boom if we don't create the job opportunities if we don't create the education opportunities the infrastructure and so on the reality is it's both it's both an opportunity as well as a threat for decades we bemoaned our large population which kept pulling the economy down then for about a decade we celebrated our demographic dividend as the economy was growing yeah. i think this new pessimism is because of the sense of malaise that has set in in the economy in general and in politics over the last few years but it's nothing that can't be overcome but was that celebration a bit euphoric possibly based on uh, not enough concrete evidence that this uh, demographic was part of the growth story i mean you come from orissa and uh, that's really been uh, you know the hallmark of big ticket investment on headlines uh, and and most people have criticized that india's growth story was much about headlines of large investments in resources as opposed to people no i don't think that's true but uh, let me come back to uh, a, a germ of truth in what you just said first of all even if you take odisha as an example leave aside the large investment look at the socio economic indicators mm. over the last decade odisha has had some of the best improvement in the country on malnutrition on poverty on education and health access mm. uh, infant mortality dropping sharply things like that so it's not true that the economic growth story has has left behind everybody this growth that we began to celebrate would need to be sustained for two decades before it would yield the all round success that it was hoped for we often compare to china now china has had sustained growth high growth for more than 3 decades we got carried away by 6 or 7 years of high growth Yeah. and and we thought that the rest of the journey was going to be on autopilot mm. that's not how life works but did you uh, did you feel it especially after seeing the recent pessimism and i'm guessing that that's probably going to be your pitch to thinkers as well is that as this entire uh, piece of demographic dividend plays out there is need for us to look inwards and find newer models of how we are going to grow as a country because now again we're down to what nearly 4% of gdp growth i mean i can't remember a time when india didn't uh, in recent past have uh, a chip on their shoulder with the growth rate in international spaces and today we are embarrassed you know i think every model of growth that exists today has been around all along mm. if you look at part of the debate that we are having in india on whether we should have growth or whether we should have redistribution it mirrors exactly the debate 2000 years ago in rome mm. between julius caesar and cato the younger so it, it's deja vu I think we have to recognize that in a large country like India you can't have reliance on only either you can't just focus on growth and think that redistribution will take care of itself yeah and you can't just focus on redistribution thinking that growth will take care of itself mm. you have to have a balanced approach you must recognize that without growth there is nothing to redistribute and you must also recognize that without redistribution you are not carrying a large part of the billion people billion plus people that we have and that's not sustainable so any sustainable acceptable government is going to have to address both equally do you think that's possibly a big missing link in our economic philosophy irrespective of which government is in power that we tend to promote one aspect of this growth story than the other i think we say uh, the right things but when it comes to walking the talk you are right i think the emphasis shifts uh, the pendulum swings too heavily one way or another go back 10 years mm. we had the growth story going and as i have demonstrated to you uh, enough of the disenfranchised were also beginning to be picked up into the system right. and yet that disastrous election campaign of india shining forgot that there were still hundreds of millions of people that were out of the system that needed to be included mm. but look at the last few years we've been talking about inclusive growth that has improved very much to either it's just talk yeah. the whole effort has been on how to include more and more people without any growth or yeah. with much lower growth so i think the rhetoric has always been there but uh, matching actions to rhetoric has lacked either on the growth part or on the inclusiveness part yeah. the time has come that we need to find the optimum or the optimal 
balance between the two and so far we haven't found it i think that is the challenge and that is the debate that's going on today you know i want to just draw your attention to something what will be sub debates of this whole growth debate which is really the l l role business community has played over the last few years many would say at the peak of course the businesses uh, most most conglomerates in india were very uh, positive they were beaming with energy going out there to the rest of the world saying you know india is the place to be today they're not able to do that but at the same time they have this uh, feeling of self inflicted uh, you know government versus business situation uh, and i think they they're trying to go into a shell even though many open letters have been written do you think the, there's a there's a evident fight between government and business uh, though it's not good for growth at any point i think there's been an unfortunate turning of the clock back if you remember for the first 45 years after independence we had a similar ambiance yes. where businesses and the private sector was distrusted we had a extremely heavy reliance on government finding solutions to every problem and that didn't uh, that was not optimal and then with the opening up of the economy we entered an era when the private sector was celebrated for its growth in india also reaching out to the rest of the world and and seeing as world beaters and we had many cultural heroes that right. were entrepreneurs and they began to be celebrated was that overdone i think what has happened is in the last few years Uh, you've seen this turning back of the clock where i think business also has to recognize that uh, they've contributed to this uh, this turning back because you've seen this great surge of cronyism yes and that have involved not only fly by night operators but some of the more respectable names in indian business and allowing even a shadow of doubt to cross your uh, branding means that uh, you know you fingers are going to be pointed uh, it's not entirely the business world's fault because if governance standards have fallen to a level mm. where it becomes not only necessary but crucial to bribe to to get access to normal business opportunities it's a vicious cycle right and i think we need to reboot we need to reboot and start out on a fresh slate that neither should businesses be treated as criminals to begin with nor should they be treated as saints they should be mm. treated as businesses they have a role to play they have a role to build the economy they have to play by rules which are equally applied to everybody mm. but both governance and the business community have a role to bring about that image do you think that there's been also a breakdown of systems that allow more uh, appropriate uh, and transparent dialogue between uh, india inc and uh, the government i mean at the end of the day we don't have a system where india inc can go to an established lobbying system and to say okay please lobby on these subjects even though we do have cii fiki i'm not sure if they are always taking on controversy head on uh, so in that sense uh, when we see a big politician meeting a big business person in any sort of fora or otherwise uh, at cocktails and dinners this is something that's looked down upon in the us a lot uh, of late do you think india could be headed that way Look, I don't think uh, corporate India lacks in lobbying firepower. <laughs> so I don't think that's the issue. I think the real issue is not that there isn't enough dialogue. You know, in recent times you have seen very senior political leaders such as uh, Congress Vice President having a, a first ever big meeting with CII and talking candidly about various issues. Yeah. What has been missing is action following those dialogues. You've seen the Prime Minister's Business Council meeting with top business names. You've had these meetings where I think even candid discussions have taken place but no action has followed. So that's the point I'm making repeatedly mm. that the the talk is all there the rhetoric is all there it's not matched by action uh, mostly by the government but also a little bit by the business community and that has to be corrected So you think that in India uh, the business climate is likely to remain in this flux for some time and the concept of the clean business is really needs to be uh, resurrected because it doesn't exist today businesses will be as clean or as unclean as the environment in which they operate mm. um a clean business cannot operate in a very murky corrupt um incestuous system uh, and neither can a dirty business operate in a system which is transparent where where information is available to the public where uh, opportunities are equal yeah uh, so i think we need to correct the system 
I think we've gone too late in the term of this government to try and correct it in the last stages. You've got only a few months left for elections. Yes. I think we will need at least one election before the balance is restored. My fear is that we may need more than one election to restore the balance. Well, that fear should make everyone think again. Thanks very much. Thank you.